Benjamin Franklin is known as one of America's founding fathers, a title the nation's first five presidents also share. Those presidents are George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and James Monroe. Franklin, however, didn't live to see most of them become president. In fact, he died in April of 1790, a little less than a year into Washington's term. He was 84. At the time, Washington was 58, Adams was 53, Jefferson 47, Madison 38, and Monroe 32. There were 26 years between Washington and Franklin. For more perspective, when the Revolutionary War started, Franklin was 69 and Monroe was 16. All six served significant roles in fighting for America's independence and then in stabilizing the young nation. However, because of age differences and their different roles in America's founding, they all knew each other to varying degrees. Franklin, who was undoubtedly the most famous man in America at the start of the Revolution, was certainly well known to everyone in the nation, let alone to the other founders. But he was hardly close with every one of them. Yet, he did know some rather well, and still left a profound impact on the ones he didn't know. Washington and Franklin had the most distinct relationship, as they were effectively the two leaders of the revolution. In most interactions, they were dealing with people who were, in one way or another, their subordinates. But to each other, they were equals. As Jefferson later wrote to Washington, quote, The world has drawn so broad a line between you and Dr. Franklin on the one side, and the residue of mankind on the other. Washington led in the field, and Franklin in diplomacy. Their paths, however, did often cross. They saw each other when Washington went back to Philadelphia to meet with Congress, and they corresponded through letters. Early in the war, Washington took Franklin's recommendations on men to be promoted to officer. Franklin was, in fact, one of the very few people Washington would take counsel from. They'd first met two decades prior to the Revolutionary War, during the French and Indian War, when they both led their state militias. Despite Washington being only in his early 20s, his valor and leadership left a significant impression on Franklin, which is why in 1775, Franklin was so adamant that Washington lead the Revolutionary Army. That said, they were never close. They had very different personalities. Franklin was a man known for his charm, sense of humor, and easygoing nature, and Washington for his stoicism, self-control, and fixation with always appearing dignified. Their relationship was one of mutual respect. Their correspondences during the war were often purely professional. However, they both expressed the desire to spend more time together after the war. They didn't get much of a chance to because of both of their busy schedules, along with living in separate states. However, they would meet one last time in 1789, about a year before Franklin's death. While Washington was on his way to begin his presidential term in the capital, he stopped at Franklin's home for a visit both had long desired. When Franklin died in 1790, he willed his beloved walking stick to Washington. John Adams and Franklin had many more face-to-face -face interactions. They saw each other at the Continental Congress and served together as diplomats to France. However, it's likely that if they worked more distantly, they would have gotten along better. Adams never knew the Franklin of 20 years prior like Washington did. In the Continental Congress, all he could see was an old man sleeping most of the time, yet somehow being revered by everyone. Things were even worse in France. Adams saw Franklin as being far too laxed with the French, enjoying his status as a great inventor, thinker, and charmer, rather than pushing aggressively for France's support in America's war. This was Franklin's style, to persuade through charm and covert tactics, but Adams couldn't grasp this concept. They were radically different in personality. Franklin was agreeable, indirect, and charming, whereas Adams was disagreeable, blunt, and even considered by friends to be obnoxious. 
Some of their differences may have simply been because of where both men were in their lives when their paths crossed. While Franklin was content with his life and many accomplishments, Adams was consumed with ambition and a desire for recognition. They even butted heads over mundane matters. While sharing the same room in Paris, Adams was furious with Franklin for opening the window, believing the night air would make them sick. Based off his own scientific studies, Franklin insisted there was no risk, and the two argued into the late hours. When Franklin died, Adams was vice president. Two months before Franklin passed, he wrote a letter to Adams encouraging the abolition of slavery, one issue they strongly agreed upon. All in all, they certainly had come to respect each other, but they never got along. A letter from Adams to fellow founding father Benjamin Rush expresses his resentment. Quote, the essence of the whole revolution will be that Dr. Franklin's electrical rod smote the earth and outsprung George Washington, that Franklin electrified him with his rod, and thenceforward these two conducted all the policy negotiations, legislation, and war. For his part, Franklin once said of Adams that he, quote, means well for his country, is always an honest man, often a wise one, but sometimes, and in some things, absolutely out of his senses. In contrast, Thomas Jefferson was very fond of Franklin. Well before they had even met, he was a far away admirer. He owned several copies of Franklin's books and looked to Franklin as the model of a man who could successfully pursue various endeavors in life, from politics to science to writing and philosophy. He would later come to admire Franklin's interpersonal conduct as well, such as Franklin's ability to resolve conflicts without confrontation. Jefferson wasn't as agreeable as Franklin and wasn't nearly as outgoing. However, he was shy and non-confrontational and therefore mimicked some of Franklin's covert methods to work behind the backs of his enemies while being friendly to their faces. Jefferson also hated public speaking, so he naturally preferred Franklin's style of giving short speeches. They first met at the Second Continental Congress in the summer of 1775. At the time, Jefferson was 32 and Franklin was 69. Far from the historical figure he is known as today, Jefferson was simply a lawyer, having served six years in the Virginia House of Burgesses. Philip Zisha, associate editor of the papers of Benjamin Franklin, described the relationship between Franklin and Jefferson by saying, quote, Jefferson always viewed Franklin with a great amount of respect and a great amount of deference, but not as a close friend or peer. Citing Jefferson's strong adherence to social hierarchy and respect for elders, the following year, in 1776, they served on the five-man committee to draft the Declaration of Independence. Jefferson, who was the primary writer, was dismayed when the document was criticized and debated so thoroughly by Congress, and Franklin used a personal story to encourage him. Their paths crossed again in France in 1784, when Jefferson served as a diplomat alongside Adams and Franklin for a nine-month period. Here, Franklin introduced Jefferson to his many connections in France. The last time they met was just a year before Franklin's death in 1789. While Jefferson was making his trip to the capital to begin his term as Secretary of State, he visited Franklin's home. Jefferson would maintain his deep respect for Franklin for the rest of his life, often using him as an example for others to model themselves after. Perhaps the best summary of his feelings towards Franklin are his words when taking over Franklin's position as minister to France in 1785. When asked, quote, is it you, sir, who replaces Dr. Franklin? Jefferson replied, quote, no one can replace him, sir. I am only his successor. Franklin had much less of a personal connection to James Madison and James Monroe. In the case of Madison, there was an age difference of 45 years, and with Monroe, it was over 50. When Franklin died, Madison was 38 and Monroe 31. It's undoubted that Franklin's thinking had a great impact on both, but this is because they had been mentored by Jefferson, 
who had been mentored and inspired by Franklin. In a letter, Madison actually spoke directly of his relationship with Franklin, stating that they had only gotten to know each other in 1787 during the Constitutional Convention. Quote, I did not become acquainted with Dr. Franklin till after his return from France, during the session of the Grand Convention, of which he was a member. I had opportunities of enjoying much of his conversation, which was always a feast to me. I never passed half an hour in his company without hearing some observation or anecdote worth remembering. In the rest of the letter, he discussed some of the conversations they had about religion, aging, and the convention, some of which were from Franklin's sickbed. Most fondly, however, Madison recalled Franklin's anecdotes and his way of teaching through stories. By contrast, Monroe didn't attend the convention due to work obligations, and no meeting between him and Franklin was ever documented. It's hard to imagine, however, that Monroe, being such a diligent protege of Jefferson, wouldn't have profoundly felt Franklin's influence. For more videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel. To show your support and have your name featured in the credits, consider making a donation on Patreon of either 2 5 or $15 a month. Patreon link in the description below.